Hello, this is a tutorial on using a new tool called Adobe Spark. Adobe Spark is free, requires no downloads, works on a PC, on a Mac, or there are apps for mobile devices as well. Eventually down the road, there will be some additional features added, more of a pro version, in which there will be a fee associated with that. But currently, as it stands, this particular product will remain for free. In order to access it, you go to spark.adobe.com. And then you would start now for free once you have your account established you will then log in. You have options for how to sign in if you have a Facebook account or a Google account, or you can sign up for free with an additional uh, email address. I'm gonna use Google. <clears throat> and once you sign up originally, you will have to allow Adobe to connect with uh, any various email addresses or software applications. So in this case, you say allow. And we're done. We have to confirm the terms of usage. Let's get started. OK, so <clears throat> what can you do with this particular tool? Well, as you can see here, there's three different things. You can create um, posts to a social media account. I'm going to talk about it, but I don't know that there's really a lot of educational uses for that. But a lot of the tools will work the same way. There's also creating a web story, which is called page. And then there's an animated video, which is primarily where we're going to show the action and the activity today. So you can use this tool for digital storytelling. You can use it to clarify thinking, classify ideas, explain meeting. It can be a graphic organizer. Uh, you can highlight similarities and differences to show that uh, there is a deeper understanding that goes beyond the surface level knowledge. And you can form generalizations based on categorized items. So a number of different types of uses. Uh, it can be an infographic type of a thing, and just another one of the tools in that particular genre that, depending on which one uh, has various aspects that you like, you may prefer one over the other. So let's go ahead and take a look at how this works. Okay, so as I said, you can just click on post page or video on the little plus symbol here. Also, you can go to the little hamburger menu, and you can get to the same idea. When you complete something, it's going to be called a project, and this would be where you would go to get that. I'm going to close out of here. I'm not going to do a post, but just to kind of show you. Basically, this is just like an individual statement. What do you want to say? You are cued here as to what you can do. You would type anything in here that you would like to post. You hit continue, and then you can actually pick a, <clears throat> a graphic. You can determine which way it's going to orientate itself. You also have more sizes, and then you would continue. And then you would have the ability to either have it get pushed out to one or more social media platforms. Not really anything we're going to do, but I did want to show you that aspect of it. So I'm going to X out and get back to where we would be. Again, if I had some projects here that I already completed, there would be thumbnails of them, and I could just click on them to launch them. Also, to show you here, this is what's called the Inspiration Gallery. There are a bunch of things that are already done for you if you'd like to see how certain other users have created various things. And up here, you can click More. So again, I'm going to go back to the hamburger patty, and this time I'm going to do a page. So it's pretty easy. It actually walks you through everything that you're going to need to do. So you can add a title and a subtitle. You have themes that you can choose here. And it will change on the spot. Once I'm done with choosing my theme, I can go back at any time to re-change the theme. OK, 
Okay, so <clears throat> I have identified some items here. I can add a photo if I'd like. I can upload a photo that I have created myself that I might have on my machine. I can search for photos. And the nice thing about uh, searching one of the sources, you have all these choices, but one of the sources is the, um, the Adobe area where um, all the stuff is going to be stored on an Adobe server. So Adobe actually has some photos that it has in its little library that is Creative Commons, which means you don't have to worry about any copyright infringements or getting any permissions or paying any fees to get access to that. So you would just click on Upload Photo and grab wherever you might have uh, a, an image. Uh, let's grab this one. And so it's added it. I do have the ability to move my text around, and I pretty much have this one kind of established and done. And I have the ability to preview it if I want to see what this looks like. Get out of my preview window, get back to it so I can drag this and put it someplace a little bit more. Well, it doesn't seem like it wants to stay. But I have the ability to share. And I can actually share it a number of ways. I can load it to my machine. <clears throat> I can uh, add some, since I'm going to share it, I can pick some categories for it. I can change my name right here if that's what I want to do. I can uh, add this particular project right to my own uh, website. And I can create a link. And it's creating my link. I now have this link. So what this allows me to do is I can copy the link. I can email it to somebody. I can grab the embed code if I wanted to put it in a website. I can also instantly post it to Facebook or Twitter. Again, that's not anything I'm going to do, so I'm going to get rid of that. I'm going to go out here again to my hamburger, and I'm going to go with a video, because I think this is probably where you're going to find most of the uses. So basically you have some different templates here. You have everything from promote an idea and it will lay out kind of like a storyboard for you as to exactly what you should include. Should you have text? Should there be an image? Tell what happened, a hero's journey, show and tell. And I'll move over here. We got personal growth, teach a lesson, an invitation, and then make up my own. So if you don't actually know what you want to do, or if it's the first time you've used it, teach a lesson, you know, you can go to town with that, and it will tell you exactly what you need to do. Now you can add icons, you can add photos, you can add text to every slide, you can also have music play over the entire presentation, you can record your voice on each individual slide, and then obviously save it and then share with the world. So these are some of the things that'll show you that you can do. And in each case, I have a plus button where I'm going to add a photo, an icon, or text. This is how I would add another slide. I have the preview and the ability to play a slide if I wanted to see what happens. I have some different types of themes to choose. You can see that I'm on the theme area. And so I can choose a theme and it will adjust the background for me. I have the music choice where currently it's ukulele stroll and I could preview that to see if I like it, but I can change it to anything else that I want just by clicking on the word. And it will instantly become the default. I have the ability to drag my music a little lower. This is not a bad idea, especially if you're going to have slides where you want to have a narration over the top. You can actually turn music all the way off as well too. And then there's also the layout. One thing is this current setup. You can also do two things where you'll have side-by-side -side slides. And these bounding boxes over here 
will allow you to add an icon, a photo, and a text there. And then you can do the same thing over here. So depending on how you want to lay it out, I can put a photo on this one. And again, go through and grab my photos. And on this one, I can put some text information. And it's simply nothing more than typing in whatever I want to type. And it will resize for me appropriately. And I can go find photos. And I grab that one. Now you don't get a lot of editing choices as far as resizing and whatever. It's going to put in the size that it feels is appropriate for what you want to do. Okay. So again, themes, music, layout, I can click on any one of those to change it. If I'm going to add another slide, I just come down here and add another slide. I can actually change the place because maybe in this case, I want this one to be a title slide. So that's all I need there. Then we have this one. I'm going to add another slide. Again, I can decide whatever I want. Do I want that split screen? Or how about this? You can add a photo. Then I would come over here and I would grab a photo. Do another laptop one here. Okay. I can then add another screen, another slide. And so I have something as simple as that. <clears throat> now I can preview the entire thing. And again, the music is in the background there. I can decide whether or not I like it or not and make whatever adjustments I need to make. Now, one of the things you might notice here in the bottom right corner is there's a 2S. This stands for two seconds. That's how long each slide is going to be on the screen before it auto loads the next slide. You have the ability to adjust that. It can go from one second all the way up to 10 seconds. So let's say I want mine to be three on this slide. I can do this on individual slides because I might want something a little longer. Say four on that one, three there. Let's go to three here, and maybe two, the end is fine. Okay, so now I decide that I want to add some narration over the top. What I'm going to do is I'm going to click and hold this microphone button to start recording. It's going to do a three, two, one, and then uh, I'm going to release the button, and that will be the end of my recording. Okay, so I'm going to click on the mic. Got to say allow here, so it's going to allow me to use my mic. I got to do that again. Getting started with Spark. And if I don't like that, I can record over top. I can listen to it, do the playback here. Notice how you got the squiggly line that shows that I've added some sound. So I go to the next slide. This is some gobbledygook language. And as long as I finish before three seconds, it will not advance the slide while I'm still talking. So I do have to pay attention to that. OK. And you can see that we have sound on this slide as well. You can add a photo. The end. Okay, so we have all that done. Again, I can play back. I can add more slides. I can adjust the layout. I can change the music. I can make the music louder. I can make it quieter, or I can make the music go away. Again, I can preview the entire thing. And it'll go ahead and play along with my narration and my music. Done with the preview, close out. So at this point, 
I have the ability to download it to my machine, which I can do. Lesson, I can give it a, a subtitle. This is the type of lesson that I chose, so I can change it to free. And let's see. I don't want to add photo credits, so I don't have to worry about that. And I'm going to go down to create a link. And so the link will be created. So I could have downloaded it to my machine, which was the other choice that I had there. That's an option that you may want to consider. And then there's also creating the link here. And so it's actually rendering this particular video right now and creating the link, you see this little reddish orange bar coming across when it gets all the way to the end. Uh, it will be done, and that's it. This is using Adobe Spark, a free tool. The finished product is an MP4, and it stores it on Adobe's server, so you can always go back to it. You can take the copies and download them to your machine, and then you actually have a copy of it, but your master version, if you will, is gonna remain on Adobe server, so you will just log in again in order to get access to that. And there's our link, and again we have the downloading uh, ability and when we can uh, edit details so we could change the name, title, that type of a thing. So this is Adobe Spark, and I really hope you enjoyed this tutorial and can find some uses for this particular tool.